Insurance doesn't have to be a headache. Hodinkee Insurance is the fastest and easiest way to protect the watches you love. So, what are you waiting for? Sign up today. There's a specific class of horology, avant-garde horology, that breaks the traditional mold of a two-hand configuration on a dial that we're all typically used to. Italian time is almost secondary when it comes to avant-garde horology. It's more about displaying technical prowess and imagination. And usually, that kind of watchmaking costs big bucks. But what if we wanted to democratize this sort of watchmaking and make it more accessible to more enthusiasts? That's exactly what Max Busser has done with the Mad One Red. And in a way, it's more interesting operating under a certain set of parameters because it takes a certain sense of creativity to come up with something that looks like this, but costs less than $3,000. This is a week on the wrist with the Mad One Red. So this is a wild watch, but let's look at it through the numbers. The case is made of aluminum and sits at 42 millimeters wide. It's 18.8 .8 millimeters tall, and inside is an inverted Miyota 821A. And what Max has done is he's removed the original rotor from the Miyota and replaced it with a titanium tungsten sort of battle axe triple bladed rotor. Part of the reason why Max selected the Miyota 821A is because it has a unidirectional winding system, which means that there's very little friction when the rotor is spinning the way that isn't winding the watch. Oftentimes in watch writing, we'll talk about how you can stare through the case back for hours or watch this little mechanical beating heart. He's taken that notion and put it right front and center. Normally the real estate that would be taken up by the vital components of a watch. He's essentially saying, well, reading the time is secondary and just enjoying the mechanical aspect of the watch is the primary function of it. So all the spinning is novel and great, but how do you actually tell the time? Well, this uses a lateral display, which means that the time is displayed on the side of the watch, like many of Max's creations, the HM3, the HM8. And what he's done here is, remember, the movement is flipped upside down. So if you imagine where the hands would normally attach to a dial is facing downward towards the case back on this watch. And it's actually affixed to two rotating cylinders, one for the hour and one for the minute and you read that through a window between the six o'clock lux. Across from that, at 12 o'clock, is the crown. So this is the second Mad One, the Mad One Red. The first had blue accents instead of red, and it was just called the Mad One. And the Mad One was offered to the F in MBNF, all of the friends, all of the suppliers to Max. And it was offered at a very attractive price. And then all of a sudden, they started popping up on the secondary market for obscene prices. It was a less than a $3,000 watch and it was popping up for $15,000, $20,000. I think the reason why they were trading for that much is because normally to get something from the mind of Max Bosser, it costs just as much as a Ferrari, $100,000 and up. Now $15,000 doesn't sound so bad. So clearly it was demonstrated that these watches could sell for above $15,000. But instead, Max kept the price at a very reasonable $2,900. And I wanted to find out how he did it. So I asked him. The reason we actually were able to create such a, a crazy piece at that price point, actually there are many reasons. Uh, the first one is that it's never been intended as a business. Mm. Now, when you go into those price points, you have to make a lot of product and sell a lot of product to amortize your development. And um, you clearly start thinking, I want to please as many people as possible. <laughs> Uh, in our case, it was absolutely not that. Uh, it was this old dream I have had for, for decades now to be able to create something a little crazy and fun uh, and really, really well made for my friends and family. So I met Max back in 2013 in the lobby of the Siam Kempinski Hotel. So I sat down with him, he walked me through his vision and showed me some of his early pieces and I instantly fell in love with what he was doing. I thought it was so cool to reimagine horology in a totally different way, unlike anything I've ever seen before. I wanted one, but I also knew I would never be able to afford one. And finally, in 2022, I am able to own a piece from Max Busser. Of course, not an MBNF, but I think this underscores why it's so interesting. 
This watch closed that loop and made a dream come true. And granted, $2,900 isn't actually accessible for everyone, but at least everyone can aspire to this watch. It's not out of reason. And as more and more people are collecting watches, they're finding different ways in. No longer do you have to buy a bland blue dial dive watch first to get into the hobby. For the same price, you can get something like this. And there's nothing wrong with more diverse offerings at that price point. The Mad One Red is a good example of a watch where the numbers tell a different story than it being on the wrist. On the wrist, it's light and easy, and that's due to the aluminum case. I think if this were stainless steel, the 18.8 millimeter height would create too much weight and it would be present on your wrist. You would be thinking about it all the time. Granted, it still is a chunk of a watch for sure, but aluminum makes it far more wearable. Now you might be wondering what it's like to tell the time. I do have one minor quibble with this watch, and it's that every time I go to look at it, I look at the dial side first, and I get distracted by the spinning, and I forget to actually look at what time it is. So then I have to look again. And even telling time through the lateral display takes some getting used to. The numbers scroll from left to right, and you kind of have to match up where they are. The calibration is as such where it just gives you an approximate estimate of the time, not down to the minute. And I actually kind of like that, because this is the way I want to live my life. I like stoic design and watchmaking. I'm a tool watch guy. The whimsical stuff at crazy prices goes right over my head. But what I really like about this watch is that at $2,900, I'm willing to take a risk on something I normally wouldn't even touch. A lot of six-figure watches come through the office, and sometimes I find myself struggling to comprehend and appreciate all the work that went in on the back end. But I think it's even more interesting to know that someone produced this and sold it for $3,000. Max has found the perfect balance between channeling the ethos of his crazy imaginative MBNF pieces and producing something on an industrial scale that rings in at $2,900 give or take. That's a price I can afford and it's something I can get behind.